Hi, ever wonder what it's like to work another profession or live in the underworld? Listen to Unsuspecting Riders give a 10 to 15 minute personal masterclass as I spontaneously interview them as they enter my taxi. I'm your host, Simon Rushton, and this is Taxi Chronicles. Morning, morning, morning. This is part two, really, of the pharmacy world. What it's like dealing with drug addicts and different experiences where you have to issue out drugs to people. So, another writer, another story. Thank you. We're in, more interested. So, you were telling this story. You was working in a um, pharmacy place, and it was... Well, you tell the story. Uh, so, it... <laughs> So I had a patient come in, Um, he'd been in an argument, he's a very aggressive patient, he always comes in and he starts shouting, but he had had an argument with someone outside the pharmacy and he wanted to use our phone, so at first I was saying no because the phone isn't supposed to be used by patients, but he wasn't taking no for an answer, he ran into the back of the pharmacy, he started looking through all the confidential stuff and he grabbed... did he run in? Run into before, the back uh, Before of, you gave him the phone or after you? Before I gave him the phone because he wanted to come and take it himself. Oh, so, um, so he he came into the back of the pharmacy, even though that's a uh, staff only area, looked through, all, looking at all the personal items, about the confidential things that belong to other people. He finally found the phone, he grabbed it and ran to the other side of the pharmacy and started calling the police. So I let him, I, I didn't stop him. Um, then the person he was having a fight with also came into the pharmacy. He's having a physical fight. Yeah, and they're running after him, so they're literally just running around the pharmacy. Just, the one of them's <laughs> chasing the other. And you're standing there going, I don't want anything! I need to sign up for this! How about both give you a jab? <laughs> Send you down! Oh, God. And uh, they're just knocking everything over, and they end up just throwing the phone back at me and just running out of the pharmacy. What, both of them? Yeah, and then obviously I had to call the police because they literally made a mess of the whole pharmacy. And we had to get him banned. Did, did they get the drugs that they wanted? So he, you, no, we, we didn't give them anything. Um, and we just banned them from coming in. Doesn't he know what drugs he needs? He does, but it's my, they're locked up because of the type of drugs that they are. They're, they're in so a locked cupboard. Get a key off you. Yeah, so he, but he doesn't know that they're locked up, so he doesn't know that he needs a key. Okay, so what rings to mind, comes to mind for me, could have, they could have staged it. Let's make out we're having a fight, then we kind of roll into the place, then we drag all the, drag all the drugs and run off. Do you see what I mean? I mean, that has happened, not to me, but to people I know. Well, and in that case, you just have to give it to them because you have to put your own safety first. So what, they come in with a weapon or something? Yeah, and they threaten they the say, pharmacist. I'm going to stab you if you don't give me all your drugs. Yeah. But you're not, haven't you got cameras? We do, but I mean, it, in that, and we have like a panic button, so you press it and the police will come straight away. But in that situation where someone's got a knife to your throat, you oh, they just... hold it to your throat? I, I've, I've known that to happen to, to pharmacists, not to me personally. Um, so you just have to give it to them. You can't really, you mm. can't really not because you have to. Put, you're as the manager, you're responsible for all the other staff in that pharmacy as well. Yeah. You can't, you can't put yeah. their life at risk for the yeah, sake yeah. of some drugs. I see, I see what you're saying. It's like it's not worth taking, getting stabbed by a drug addict. Yeah. Or bitten or something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for for uh, just to, and he's gonna get his high anyway. Yeah, so he's either gonna get it from you, at you, or he's not gonna get it from someone else. But you're gonna pay a price for not giving it. To yeah, him. exactly. So, so they have to they have to make up. You have to make up your mind very quickly. Yeah. But at the same time, if you become a pushover, they know that they can come there all the time. Yeah, I mean they they're gonna get caught. They know that they are because most of the time they've been to that pharmacy before to know what where everything is. They've looked around. So, and they know what they're doing so most of the time they they know they'll get caught but they want that temporary high so they're willing to so they don't care but oh, i see what you're saying they don't really care about being caught no they just want the high they just want the high so the police are like when they come it's like bloody hell do we really have to arrest this person <laughs> yeah all right we'll put him in jail but then he just yeah 
do you do you ever have those kind of incidents and then you see the person walking around the street the next day yeah 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 so please can't be bothered i know uh, well if that was you or me well probably me definitely <laughs> i'll be front and center <laughs> In front of Her Majesty. Okay, so what? Um, what's the scariest story that you've had or experienced or anything you've heard? Uh, because it sounds like it's a bank, like it, they do it like a bank rob robbery. They, they come can. and they scout the place. Yeah. But they just scouting it for potential drugs. Yeah. And then they come back and they go, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm trying to think what the scariest thing and is. So, these people must get the drugs and then go around the corner and sit down and just get high and yeah and the police will come along and look at them and say you know what you've done you're gonna get in the car <laughs> yeah and then they're out a few days later so what so what are they are they putting them in a holding cell yeah because i mean the the guy that did that he's local to the area and the few weeks after we saw him again just walking around the street so nothing really happened to him okay. When they tell you their stories, you said some of them are very friendly. What's it? What's the? Is there a common trend? Um, I mean, with these people to why they're on drugs? Not necessarily. I mean, some of them, like the older patient people, sometimes. Sorry, go, go on. Like the older ones that we have that are addicts, it's sometimes in the past in their childhood they they've gotten onto the wrong path and now they're trying to make amends in their adult life mm -hmm. and then the younger ones they've just had a poor upbringing and they don't know better because that's all they've seen growing up so it is it is sad um that i think it, it everyone's story is so different i mm. think yeah i suppose it's how you deal with your inner demons yeah um, and uh, well, the people I see, they're all on, like I said, they're on methadone, which is the drug to try and come off heroin. Mm. So they are p making the effort to change their life. Do you, have you ever known, because I've heard a lot about methadone, but it's mainly Joe Rogan. Right yeah. There. So I'm a big fan of his uh, podcast, being a podcaster myself, he's a king in the podcasting world. Have you ever heard of it being like a f really effective? Because you're giving someone another drug to try and weed them off of one drug. And then in the same sense, people say, like the politicians say, weed is a gateway drug. So if yeah. weed's a gateway drug, how can another drug bring them down if you only go up? It's not necessarily, like in a sense, it, it's still an addictive substance, mm -hmm. but where you, it, it minimizes the risks of heroin. They're not injecting themselves. There's a lower risk of getting HIV and AIDS because so in that sense, that's what it's mainly for, is to get them to stop injecting themselves. So um, it's just a pill then? It's a liquid. Um, and what and, do they do? They and so, th so you give it to them in a cup and you watch them take it. So you know, and it, they, you build up, you kind of reduce their tolerance. So you start them off on the equivalent to what heroin they used to take. So you ask them, how many times did you inject a day? So you maybe give them 100 ml of methadone. And then over a few months, every week, you'll reduce it until they only need about 20 and then hopefully they'll come off it. Mm. It's very rare that anybody does come off it because they, <laughs> they, they relapse and they have to start again. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Also, um, they could lie to you. They could say, I've injected 20 times a day. So what a high dose. If so, if they do that, then and then you give them the equivalent methadone, they might it might be too much for their body to tolerate, and they'll overdose and they could die. So you think they think of worry about that? Probably not. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the biggest problem is they're still in the environment, so everyone around them is still injecting. So that's why there's they're always relapsing because if if their neighbors injecting the company, or can, yeah the yeah. company that if you can't get out of that environment i think it's very hard to get off these drugs jordan peterson i don't know if you've heard of him he's on youtube he's yeah. a clinical psychiatrist yeah he's a professor and um he's like a biggest youtube phenomenal professor it's like the equivalent to neil degrasse tyson but he speaks about um there's a test done on rats and you get rats addicted to is it heroin or cocaine now if you give a rat one rat a singular rat that and you keep him away from his friends and family oh, like his friends and family he will have a rat yeah um he will oops, sorry I'm going the wrong way here. 
he will um, he will keep on going back to that. But as soon as you introduce him to other people, other rats, he will he forget about the crack or the yeah. heroin. And what it says is a bit of like what you're saying is based on the company you keep is whether you really want to indulge in something. Yeah, exactly. Do you see what I mean? We're always a strong factor yeah. to it, which was really interesting because they did that test and they and then they actually removed the rat from the rest of the rats and saw and they went back to it. Yeah. And they kind of, you know, do that test back and forth, back and forth. And so, so ah, so assuming as humans we behave like rats, maybe that's the solution. But then the question is who wants to be around a cracker? Exactly, yeah. Because <laughs> Because if he's not, he's gonna sell your stuff. And I think that's the, that's the biggest problem with a lot of things. There's no rehabilitation. Like there's no way, there's nowhere for people to go to get out of it. They always have to come back to their home. You can't get them out of that environment. There's, I saw the well, just judging by Hollywood movies, I know it's not the best thing to go by, but they usually say, you know, when Hollywood movies, where they go to the real people who've been in these real situations, like yeah. it's a war film, they go to war veterans, a medical or martial artists, that kind of thing. But when they do drug scenes, they say, there's usually, if the person hasn't hit rock bottom, I mean, real, like, down, you know, you have a wake up call one day, you look at yourself and you think, look at me, who the hell is this? Yeah. <laughs> where did you come from? Um, I had that epitome a while about two weeks ago, but it's in another way when I looked at myself and I went, Simon, you know? And then you make the change. And then that's, I've actually, you know, I won't go into it, but that's where I actually made a change. Yeah. So I kind of, I, I believe that that's probably the, the same with them. It's quite sad because it's usually something drastic, like you're. Yeah, and usually it's too late at that point. So yeah, someone's like you, like your woman, and you've just forgot your baby. Something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have a friend, and she, when her her mum was when she was born, her mum was such an alcoholic. She just walked out of the hospital, and she didn't realise she'd just given birth. Yeah, Imagine that's that. really sad. But then I also think about what kind of man gets a <laughs> a woman pregnant. He's got an alcohol issue like that, <laughs> unless he's an alcoholic himself. Yeah. You know, in, in that respect, but such is life. But, yes, it's been very, <laughs> very, very interesting talking to you. <sighs> but do you never, at any time at all, do you feel vulnerable? Um, no, I think where I work, I mean, I, I don't, I feel like now that I've been working for a long time, I know how to deal with any situation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I can't predict what's going to come through my door. Someone might come at me with... A weapon one day there's like no way I can prepare for that but mm. I feel quite confident that I could deal with most things I, we have like the panic button we have mm. CCTV so I feel that's the most that you can do really and all pharmacies across the country have panic buttons yeah okay oh I didn't know that that's interesting okay well thanks a lot for that part two <laughs> much appreciated <laughs>We hope you liked that interview. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to get the latest daily episode. Ever considered investing in a continent with the fastest growing economy and population on Earth? The same continent that holds 30% of the world's known natural resources? Then listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories, where you will hear real investors with real stories from around the world Share the experience of investing in Africa. We post Monday and Thursday at 10am.